afternoon. Um, this is Tori Silas, and we are uh, ready to start our meeting. And so I'll call the meeting of the Cobb County Board of Elections, the special called meeting of August the 25th, uh, call it to order at 4.03. We, were, we will start with public comment. Presently, we do not have anyone here uh, with us in the room that will be making comment. My understanding is there are um, Cobb County residents that are on that would like to make comment. Um, I believe there are a number of people that have registered to make comment. So if you will place uh, in the chat your name, if you would like to make comment. I think the only person who is here currently is Lisa Campbell. Okay. So I'll unmute her name. Please do. Lisa, you've got unmuted if you want to make your comments. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Great. Well, thank you uh, and good afternoon, board members. Uh, my name is Lisa Campbell. I've spoken with you previously. I'm a resident, homeowner, business owner, a taxpayer, and an active voter here in Cobb County. Today, I wanted to address the importance of protecting and expanding accessible drop boxes to ensure fair, equitable, and accessible voting for all. As you know, drop ballot drop boxes are a critical part of expanding voter accessibility because they offer a secure, convenient option for voters to cast ballots. They enable eligible voters who otherwise could not vote in person to do so with safety and convenience. Importantly, ballot drop boxes allow individuals with disabilities, seniors, parents with small children, shift workers, or as in our current pandemic situation, allow individuals who are immunocompromised to exercise their right to cast ballots in a safe and secure way. Not only are drop boxes a good idea in theory, but in practice, together we saw record setting election turnout results in 2020, indicating Cobb County voters overwhelmingly like ballot drop boxes. Nationally, in jurisdictions where remote voting is prevalent, as many as 80% of voters use drop boxes in 2020. Today, I'm requesting that Cobb County election board members and officials continue to protect our rights by rejecting voter suppression and calls for drop boxes to be moved inside election offices and only available during office hours. These restrictions are discriminatory and a clear reduction in our rights to accessible voting options. I ask instead that you focus on protecting and expanding the 16 existing drop boxes with camera surveillance where voters can drop off ballots 24 hours a day and that these drop boxes remain unimpeded. I request the boxes remain in place and open for service approximately 45 days before election and available until 7 p.m. on election night. I ask that you continue your courageous and steadfast efforts to fulfill your mission as stated on your website, quote, to ensure that elections are free, impartial, fair, accurate, convenient, accessible to all voters, that you encourage voter participation and provide excellent customer service to voters, and use this time of heightened attention to rally together with constituents for greater voter drop box protections to ensure fair, equitable, and accessible voting for all of us. And I thank you for your time today. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. There are additional um, members of the public that are here to make comment. I do want to remind you that each um, of you will have five minutes. Your comments will be limited to five minutes. Uh, Mr. Ralph Bruce, uh, we will unmute you. Uh, thank you. I just like to uh, make a few points. I'm sure they've already been covered, but 
uh, drop boxes are, have been a uh, point of contention at the last election. And I hope you're going to apply some of the lessons learned there as far as uh, chain of custody and uh, eliminating some of the sloppy practices that Fulton County has been noted for. And somehow the security and monitoring of those drop boxes has got to be 24 7 for the entire period of the election. And the only place I know you can do that is in some kind of a attended sites where it's uh, somebody's there to look after it. That's pretty much my concerns. Well, thank you, Mr. Bruce, for joining us this afternoon. Um, and again, for those of you that are uh, assigned in, if you would like to participate in public comment, we have to make a note in the chat. Um, at this point, though, I don't see any additional names, so we'll just call you in the order in which you are presented, um, at least on our attending list, uh, starting with a, a Briolia Pina, Mr. or Mrs. Pina. You'll be unmuted now. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Braulio Pena. I'm just here to listen and just hear what the community has to say. And I just want to write down some notes. That's a, really why I'm in this meeting today myself. Okay, well, thank you for joining us, Mr. Uh, Pena. Uh, next on our list is uh, Ms. Irene Barton. Uh, good afternoon. Um, like the gentleman who spoke before me, I'm just here to learn when I um, saw the subject matter, wanted to make sure that um, I had to join and just to learn what was going on and any recent updates. Well, thank you for joining us, Ms. Barton. Uh, next up is uh, uh, Ms. Kendra Reed. Great, uh, works on the staff of the book. Oh, okay. Apologies. Can you scroll up to see if Ms. Debbie Fisher joined? She has no, signed up. You don't see her? Okay. Uh, Ms. Ashley Cleves, you've been unmuted to the extent you would like to make public comment. Now you're unmuted. Now you're unmuted. Sorry, Ms. Ashley. Please, you've been unmuted to the extent that you would like to make a public comment or participate in public. No comment. comment. Okay. No comment. Thank you for joining us. Can you scroll down? Uh, Mr. Richard Benenfield. Benenfeld. To the extent you would like to participate in public comment, we will unmute you. Uh oh. Thank you for the opportunity, but at this time, I'm here just to observe. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, Ms. Tanya Robinson, again, you will be unmuted to the extent you would like to participate in public comment. Good afternoon. No, I'm just here to observe as a 20 plus resident of Cobb County and a manager at one of the polling places here in Cobb County, just here to uh, listen, learn and observe. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Robinson, and thank you for your volunteerism. And then I believe finally, uh, Ms. Avril Castro, to the extent you would like to participate in public comment, you've been unmuted. No comment. Thank you. Okay, that concludes public comment. We'll move on to the regular business portion of our agenda, I believe. Um, First on in that portion of the agenda is our director of elections, Janine Ebelik. Were you going to approve the minutes, Sheila? And I jumped right over that. Thank <laughs> you. That's why we, we work as a team here. Um has every all of the members of the board, have you had an opportunity to review the minutes of our August 9th meeting? Yeah. And any comments with respect to the minutes? Okay, Go ahead. I'm going to call for it, so we'll do that. Uh, is there a motion to move uh, approve the minutes? To approve the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Bring, and your second, Mr. Garland, is that correct? Yes. Okay. It's been moved and properly seconded. All of those in favor uh, of approving the minutes as presented, please 
raise your hand. Can you see me or can you hear me? I can both, thank you. But we will not count your vote twice. <laughs> okay. but thank you for your participation and, and good to see you, Jessica. Um, it being unanimously uh, approved, the, um, the minutes are approved. Moving on now uh, to the regular business portion of our agenda, um, Ms. Janine Ebler, our Director of Elections, please. Thank you. Normally, this would be presented by Ms. Kevita Jemison, the Elections Manager, but she is dealing with an issue with a customer. So forgive me if I don't have the slick presentation of this item. <laughs> So um, what the this would be is a public hearing for the purpose of approving a temporary change to the polling location at Dobbins 02 from Calvary Baptist Church of Smyrna at 1243 Belmont Avenue, Smyrna, to the Windy Hill Community Center at 1885 Roswell Street. We do have a map of the other one, uh, no, the Dobbins 02. Yeah. So this is a map of that precinct, and you'll see that there is a black dot where the current polling place is, Calvary Baptist, and a red dot where the temporary new polling place would be. Um, these, this is because Calvary Baptist no longer wants to be a polling place, and they did notify us within the time frame of their contract to be removed as a polling place. Um, for the reason this is temporary is because we haven't found a suitable replacement uh, for a permanent change yet, but this was uh, just notified to us earlier this summer. And to get through the November election, um, we would like to com to combine the Dobbins 02 um, polling site with the Dobbins 01 existing polling site, which is already at the Windy Hill Community Center. Um, we would have signs for voters to know which polling place to which room to go in. They will both be in the community center in separate rooms. Um, there are, uh, let's see what this says, uh, 4,003 active voters in the Dobbins 02, which is the one that we'll be moving in with the Dobbins 01 polling location. Um, what I would request, if there are no more questions, or if there are questions from the board, we can answer those first, or you can open the public hearing and hear from the public on this change. Okay. Are there questions from the board with regard to the proposed temporary change uh, to the Dobbins 02 location to be co-located with the Dobbins 01 polling location? I just want, I we already answered a few questions, but Dobbins, Oh, one and two were already at this location together before they were split, correct? Correct. Um, we split this in 2020, in January of 2020, and created Dobbins 02 for the first time. Okay. Um, and then, so we're we're not recombining it, but we are just co-locating the two in the same facility for a temporary measure to get through this November election. But in effect, the voters have already voted in this location once before when they were Dobbins, when they were just one Dobbins. Yes, ma'am. That's okay. correct. Great. That makes sense. Thank you. Are there any further comments or questions with regard to this proposed temporary change? I have a question, not specifically on this, but just in terms of our contracts in general, how long typically do the facilities commit to? Should we think about changes in the contracts, which would be let uh, give us more notice and the longer periods of time at the same location? We seem to keep having these change location processes. And we actually have, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we actually have a pretty good contract. In fact, when uh, 2020 rolled around and COVID was, you know, scaring everybody. Um, we had quite a few uh, polls that wanted to cancel and our contract kept them in place for 2020 because it states that they have to give notice 90 days prior to any election and it has to be in a non-presidential or non-gubernatorial year. So that's why this one is allowed because it is the non-big uh, election year. So anything during that cycle of the main elections, 
they can't get out of it on that year. Um, I, my counterpart in Fulton, they did not have something in, in place like that. And he and I spoke afterwards because they were, they have bulls that they had to let go because they didn't have that clause in there to keep them. And so we had a very different result uh, from, from having that in there. Hey, hey. <laughs> I will ask further to you, Mr. Bruni's point with regard to this particular location. What struck me is the fact that I believe you said we entered into, um, I presume, an agreement for this dog and zone two location in 2020. How long do our contracts generally last? I mean, we're a year, perhaps, and a half later. They don't have an enter. Okay. It can be canceled. They're continuous, and they can be canceled by either party. Uh, only under the stipulations that I stated on a sure. non, uh, you know, big election year and within 90 days, beyond 90 days from an election. Right. right. So there, there is no stated term. Right. Of it. Okay. Right. Correct. Right. Are there any further comments or questions from the board? No. Is there anyone? Either present here in the room with us, or for that matter, that have joined via that WebEx that would like to provide comment with regard to this proposed change, temporary change of Dobbins 02, such that it's now co located with Dobbins 01. There is a question on the chat. Hi, uh, Ms. Campbell. Uh, we do see the question that you've raised uh, in the chat as to what is in just for all our edification, what is the reason for the proposed polling place move? Uh, Ms. Campbell, the um, Calvary Baptist Church, which is the polling location, has advised us consistent with the, um, the terms of the agreement that they no longer wish to serve as a polling location. So that is the reason uh, that the polling place has changed. Um, can you un unmute Ms. Campbell? <laughs> Ms. Campbell, you've been unmuted if you would like to uh, respond or have, have further questions. Uh, no, I just was interested in the specific reason for that request. Was there more detail there that would be pertinent to understand? Um, they, uh, their letter just said that under advisement from their attorneys that they did not want the liability of having people in their location. So, you know, they had agreed to be a polling place uh, just a short year ago, year and a half now, but had second thoughts. Okay, and I, I pre presume that they um, are permitted uh, basically termination for convenience rights that in the agreement, they don't need to advance a specific reason, correct? That's correct, they okay. do not. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. Did you have anything further? No, thank you. You're welcome. To the extent that anyone else has further comments and or questions about this proposed change, um, please let us know based upon putting a comment in the chat. Could I make a comment? Oh, of course, um, Jessica, I'm sorry. We called for, I called for board. I apologize, go ahead. I, I think that um, perhaps we may not have that information, the uh, precise information available at this meeting, but it might be helpful for the new board members as well as the general public um, at some point in the future to know uh, of our polling locations, how many are in school since we're transitioning, as well as um, how many are in, in churches and other, other non-governmental facilities. Okay, um, thank you. I, I guess that's more of a, a request for uh, Ms. Eveler and her team um, yeah. to provide that information. Um, but with regard to the, the current uh, uh, agenda item, uh, no. do you have any? No I, I, no, I have nothing specific to say concerning that. The proposed change uh, for Dobbins 02? No. Okay, excellent. Um, that being the case, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, move forward with a vote um, for all of, um, excuse me, for to change the uh, board members. If you'll signify by raising your hands as to whether. I need to make a motion. Yes. I'd like to make a motion. To okay, excellent. I'll say. 
been moved and properly seconded. I'm a little out of sorts in this room, by the way. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, yes, it's been, and it's been a very busy day. Um, it's been moved and properly seconded. All of those that are uh, in favor of approving the uh, temporary change of Dobbins 2 such that it's located with Dobbins 1. Please signify by raising your hands. It's been unanimously um, voted in favor, and therefore this um, temporary change has been approved. Uh, now we will move on to the regular business of, of the agenda. And um, Ms. Evelyn, the floor is yours. Thank you. So um, this item is regarding absentee ballot drop boxes for this upcoming November 2nd, 2021 election. Um, there seems to be a little bit of a misunderstanding and hopefully I'll be able to clear some of this up you know, relative to some of the public comments that came up. Um, going back to last year in 2020, the state election board approved an emergency rule to allow drop boxes. And the rule allowed those boxes to be stationed outside, um, adhered to the concrete or the floor um, at any government uh, facility. And um, those in, in that case, we we had all the surveillance cameras in that case. Um, and Cobb County had installed 16 drop boxes under that that rule, and the required surveillance cameras were at those locations. And the rule also allowed for the boxes to be available for 45 days prior to the election and up until 7 p.m. for the closing of the polls on election night. And so voters did really you know, like that setup. They used them extensively and um, you know, they were quite popular. But we have removed those boxes currently because in the SB 202, the legislator, legislature um, changed that. Actually, they didn't change anything because the emergency rule um, it went away. It's no longer in effect. So they established new law that requires the drop boxes to be inside advanced voting locations. And one has to be in the elections office, the main elections office. And uh, counties can have additional drop boxes inside their advanced voting locations based on whatever their population is. So we have to have one in our elections office and we are allowed to have one for every 100,000 registered voters. So in Cobb County, that is five additional uh, drop boxes. But again, they have to be inside the advanced voting locations. They are not available 24 seven. They are only available during the time when advanced voting is taking place. So that starts on the 22nd day prior to the election. Um, basically the last three weeks and ends on the Friday before the election. So after the Friday prior to the election, drop boxes are not out there. They're not, they're not open. They're not open at night. They're not open except when people are also voting in person. So with that, um, I was trying to point out in this agenda item that we already have a procedure where people can walk into an advanced voting location and hand their voted ballot for counting to the poll manager. It's called a hand delivery. Um, they can hand deliver it to this main office. They can hand deliver it to a deputy registrar at a satellite location in which the advanced voting locations are such. And they have sworn registrars that are in charge of those. So, the um, voters would not stand in line. They would merely be directed straight to either the poll manager or the poll manager's designee, if they happen to be on a break or something, who would take the ballot um, and receive it from the voter. The voter would not have to wait for any action to take place. It's basically a drop off, just like a drop box. Um, but the difference is, and what, what I wanted to point out in this agenda item, is that when there, if there were to be a drop box there, the voters would put their ballots in the drop boxes and they would sit there all day until the end of the day. 
and then the poll managers open the box, they count them, not tabulate them, but count how many envelopes there are, and fill out the transfer form, and those are transferred to the main office, and then they're worked the next day um, to either accept them, reject them, uh, contact voters if something's missing, um, and issue any cure affidavits for those who will have to cure their ballot. And, you know, now that the time frame for issuing ballots is only from the 22nd day um, to the 11th, I'm sorry, the 22nd day, which is um, October 11th, is the first day that we can issue ballots. They have to transit through the mail to the voters. So the voters have a very quick turnaround to get their ballot voted and back to us. Um, so that extra day of sitting in the box to me is not useful. Um, our plan and what we had proposed to the board and would like to propose today is that we continue with the plan to have the voters hand deliver it to the poll manager and the staff there at the advanced voting location would begin the process during that day to check in the ballot. So they are actually, again, there are registrars just like they are here at the main office um, and they would, you know, validate the information on the ballot, make sure the oath is signed, and then they have, um, well, they'll have um, containers there for those that are accepted, those that are rejected and need a cure affidavit, and those that um, have further investigation required. So those then would be counted as they come in each uh, throughout the day. That makes it a lot easier to do the transfer form and they are you know, still transferred to the office and those containers, as I was talking about, would, would still sit overnight, but there, we've already begun the process of validating those ballots. And again, the timeframes are so much shorter now with the new law that I think it's important that we um, you know, keep going with that kind of a process so that it happens a lot faster. Um, then the other thing that I wanted to mention is that there are five drop boxes, as I said, that are allowed here in Cobb, and we have more than five advanced voting locations planned. So there would be a discrepancy where some voters would have one in their location, some would not. But again, all would have the ability to hand deliver them to the poll manager either way. So this, that's the end of what I have to say. I will take questions, but the intention of this agenda item was to not have an additional item between um, our getting those ballots, which would be the drop box, and to continue to just have the process of hand delivery to the poll managers. That's all right. Tori, I, and I appreciate you calling this morning because I wouldn't even think about this. No worries, absolutely. But I appreciate it. Uh, first question, by law, we can only have five drop boxes? Correct. The law says that we, every county must have one in their main office. Right. And that for every 100,000 registered right. voters, you may have one additional that you place in advance. So, by law, we can only have five drop boxes. Correct. Okay. Up to five. Up to five. Okay. So, I apologize. That's slightly different than what was said earlier. So I just wanted to clarify one for our minutes and also for the, the, the viewing public. By law, we are required to have one in our uh, in our main office. Correct. And then what I believe I've heard you say, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that we are then permitted to have one per 100,000 registered voters. So that would sound as if it's a total of six Five in addition to the one that's required by law, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So it's a total of six and not five. But, right. Okay. But we can't have any more. The law says right. it's six or five, whatever. Yeah. Okay. And okay. at this time, you know, we're, we are considering, we still have not, you know, firmed it out, but we're considering seven advanced voting locations. But we only allowed to have five, right? Well, in different things now. So we're only allowed to have 
the main office Dropbox, right. and if we choose, if we desire, we can have five additional Dropbox. Okay, but no more. But we have no more Dropboxes, but we have seven advanced voting sites. So we have five to deploy if we want to, right. in addition to the one at the office, but we have seven sites and only six that we're allowed to have boxes. So one site um, would have no box. Okay. If we were to choose to deploy boxes, one site would not be able to have a box. I understand that because by law we can't. Correct. All right. But you can now, drop off. You can drop it. Yeah, you, you can drop it off by hand. Now, I mean, after you and I talked, I started looking at this thing. And, you know, I thought in a sense we might be holding people back from voting. But the more I look at it, I looked at we've got advanced voting. We give them plenty of time there where they can come the day of the election. Now, this is the one I think it's, a, you know, my mind. And remember, I, I'm a mental midget. So, you know, we got to understand that. Everybody has a drop box at the end of their driveway. We can mail in our, can we not? So why not just put it in your mailbox? If you can't afford the gas to go take it, I understand, but you know, I, 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 you may have disappointments with the U.S. mail. I don't know, but still, we have opportunities here. We're not, you know, I mean, at first I thought we were holding back people, but we're not. We're giving them plenty of opportunities, and so I think, you know, now after going through this, I, I think we, we've got it covered. But that's just Pat's opinion. We appreciate hearing Pat's opinion. Are there other comments from the, the board, uh, Mr. Brody? Yes. I, I think the, the difference is, as the, the lady mentioned earlier, uh, if her name is McCampbell. Ms. Campbell. People have, people love the drop boxes because they prefer to be able to walk up and put them in a safe place. Not waiting on the poll manager to get back from the bathroom or to finish with the person who is currently causing problems with their their uh, uh, their voting. Uh, so, I, to me, hey, I assume we still have the drop boxes. So so we've got five of them or six of them. Well, you're saying physically have physically the job. Have. They are stored somewhere. Uh, to to me, I think that. The because the voters like them so much that there's benefit to using them since we have them. And uh, it doesn't do any harm. I, I guess what I didn't quite understand the, the difference between them because as I understand it, uh, every night those drop boxes have to be beefy. They have to be. Uh, the ballots brought out, taken out, or the envelopes taken out and counted, and then returned to the main office. So, maybe that the poll manager uh, is five minutes later, uh, 10 minutes, 30 minutes later, I, I don't know, but some amount later, but they're still getting back to the same place uh, that night. Let me try and explain it then again, because um, when they sit in the drop box, nobody is processing that, right? But if they're hand delivered to the poll manager, the clerks there are processing them. So they don't come back to the office in the same state. So the, the ones that are worked on at the poll will already be accepted or they'll be rejected or there'll be more um, research is required. And so them coming back in that state means that letters can go out to the poll to the rejected ones that same day. We're losing a day, in other words. Um, so they come back in a different state. They come back where they're already worked on. If they're in the Dropbox, um, you know, nobody can work on them, but they start working on them here in the main office the next day. And then, of course, they would have to work on all of the Dropboxes. So that process is going to take longer because you'll have staff here that has to do all the drop boxes rather than divide and conquer 
and that all of the different uh, advanced voting site clerks are working those all day long. Ms. Edler, if I might just uh, bring a question to that specific point. So you're suggesting that a member of your staff who's been deputized that is physically there at the particular advanced location or advanced voting location where a potential drop box is located um, could not simply remove the uh, ballots from the drop box during the course of the day? No. The law is says, that, yeah, the law precludes, has us. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm just saying, is that precluded by, I wasn't yes. but is that precluded yes. by law? So the law allows for an opening at the beginning of the day to make sure it's empty, mm -hmm. signing off that it's empty, locking the box, and at the end of the day, opening the box, counting the ballots, signing off how many are being transferred to the main office. Okay. Well, I will use to Mr. Garland's um, equivalence, if you will, that the drop box at the end of my driveway is is the same. We would be losing more days than just the one day that you suggest that we're going to lose. But are there is there additional comment? Did I? Did I? Maybe I'm this. I'm sorry. I'm slow here. Now, at the end of the day, to after they count them. Do they bring them back here or do they just put them back in the box? They bring them back here every night, okay, either way, that either solution. Okay. The, the ballots from that day have to be brought back to the main office, either solution. Okay. Um, and then I would like to, if I might comment on one more thing that Mr. Burning had said. And yes, some, some voters love the boxes because of that, um, you know, no contact or whatever, but others do not. Others were, um, bringing in their ballots to be handed in and in fact lined up down the hallway here rather than put the ball, their ballot in the box that was outside. Um, there is an element of what happens to my ballot now when it's dropped into the box. But, but isn't that the same thing if you walk in and hand it to somebody? Like what's, you know, people don't like putting it, handing it to somebody and not seeing where it goes either, right? Like it's kind of, they feel comfortable handing to somebody. I just, I guess on the drop box issue, what I'd like to say is I don't think it's an either or. I actually think it's just offering our voters the option, if you like the drop boxes, to continue the use and maximizing what we are allowed so that one, we're a leader, you know, Cobb County is one of the five metro counties, can be a leader in accessibility saying, hey, look, we're, we're going to advertise and promote that this you're able to hand deliver a ballot for quick processing. We have drop boxes, we have US mail, we have advance in person. I think that shows our leadership and our shows our adaptation to SB202. I mean, I think that's all within our scope. And I actually, I just, I think our voters, there was a large contingency of voters that got used to and comfortable with it. And so I think to take something away is actually sort of, you know, it's it's almost like a punishment. And I don't think we want to come across that way. I think for me personally, and I think for, you know, for voters you know, that we've heard from, that drop boxes were an important addition to accessibility. But we still have. Right, I also think that that's extremely relevant as well. I mean, to the extent that drop boxes were not, as I understand it previously, provided for in the code, the, our legislator, our elected officials, uh, and, and state lawmakers recognizing that under this emergency order, there were these 16 boxes that were deployed and they received good marks, if you will, and, and increased accessibility and made people comfortable in a somewhat novel time. Hopefully we won't be in a, another novel time, but things are what they are. Um, they codified, our elected state lawmakers codified the ability to have these boxes, not required, but permissive, they are permitted. And I think that that in and of itself is very persuasive. Um, I do want to be certain that we engage those that have joined us virtually. Uh, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I also obviously do not want to overlook our fellow board member. Jessica, to the extent you have comment and that you would like to provide um, as a part of this, I, again, I don't want to, to have you overlooked that you're not physically with us. Okay, well, I, I appreciate that. I This has been a difficult decision, another difficult decision for me because um, I believe that we have the ability with five drop boxes to help our public transition 
from uh, processes last year uh, to what 202 dictates. And since we have five, am I correct? We have five municipalities uh, that will have uh, candidates on the ballot for various positions. Um, and we have the one countywide East Blast. Uh, I, I believe that we are in a, in a, um, a unique position this year, at least, to make it make sense to our voters that we have drop boxes essentially representing the five um, municipalities and those and locations within those municipalities plus the extended um, advanced voting locations as well as um, perhaps other pilot pro uh, proposals that we've talked about so i'm in Although I do understand, and, and I know that Janine understands that I do understand the process for uh, voters handing their ballots to someone, I can say that many, many of us are of the opinion that this year we're in, a, as far as safety, health and safety is concerned, that we are in a worse position this year than we were last year. And so, um, I foresee in the future that we would have problems, greater problems with public understanding of what's happening. Um, but I think that this year we have an opportunity to help transition and help the public understand that we are limited now and we will be limited in the future as long as 202 is um, enforced. So I'm not sure. So I'm not sure that that's, it, it sounds like an opinion, but I am of the opinion that we can do both. I've seen a couple of comments come up and I, and I know that Tori, you're going to open this up um, for perhaps other uh, addressing other concerns that have been expressed. Uh, but I do hope that everyone who is tuning in understands that these drop boxes have to be inside, that they are, uh, that they're not outside bolted, that there still would be a, a level of contact. Um, and certainly, um, we would need to work at not having confusion as far as uh, appropriate signage and understanding by the public of where to go, the voting public of where to go to find the drop boxes or to locate the drop boxes or to use them. Am I correct, Janine, in, in remembering that we had about, what, 30% drop box, votes by drop boxes? I think what you're remembering is there was 30% absentee, 30% in-person, uh, advanced votes, a whole 33, okay. third, a third, third, and third. But of okay. the absentees uh, that were submitted, a good portion of them were uh, submitted to the drop boxes again because they were very convenient. We love them, honestly, um, mm -hmm. but they're not convenient in the same way that they were. Right, and and I actually because I I um, visit our advanced voting locations on a regular basis during the three weeks of advanced voting. Um, my anecdotal experiences uh, run the gamut between people who were who were very happy that we had they had we had drop boxes available, and I also experienced many people who were absolutely were not going to drop their um, ballots into drop boxes. I experienced voters who were very um, concerned about observers who were sitting close to the drop boxes that were outside. So uh, I recognize that there's high anxiety about whether the vote, their votes are going to be affected. But I do, I do tend to think that this particular election, uh, we have an opportunity to maximize our drop box usage and help transition and help um, present information to our voters about change, about the change. Thank you, um, Jessica. Just one point of order. Generally, there has not been public comment during this type. Correct. And so, and that's why I just wanna be very transparent with everyone. Um, and that's why I call for a point of order. Point of order. Generally, in our meetings during this type of discussion, and um, there is not an opportunity for public comment. And obviously, we recognize, and I obviously want to be respectful of those that are placing comments in the chat. 
Um, we do see those comments, but uh, to, to the point about hearing from uh, those um, members of the public that have joined us, we're not necessarily in a position to do that. Am I correct? Well, this is not a public comment. Topic. Understood. That's what I'm, that's why I'm clarifying with you so that everyone that's not here in the room with us can hear right. that that clarification is being made right. with our, our, our attorney. So I just want them to understand why we've not invited them, that being the viewing public, to participate in this conversation. Right. Okay. Is there, um, I mean, and obviously we're later in the agenda going to move down to the advanced voting plan. Obviously, this is a sub part of the advanced voting plan, um, but is there any further comment or I do have one question, but um, I will, you know, hold off with mine. Is there further comment or question for the board at this time? So um, Jessica raises a good point, a point that I wanted to raise as well with respect to the five municip municipalities for which we are conducting their election. Admittedly, we've not approved the voting plan, but the proposed advanced voting locations. Am I correct in that there is a proposed advanced voting location in each of the municipalities for which we are uh, facilitating their election? Is that correct? Yes. Okay. There is um, already a drop box, obviously, in, in their main location because mm -hmm. our main office is that. So. Oh, I just wanted to be certain. That's why I'm here. So an admin or just. Oh, yeah, I've got it. Okay. Okay. Um, Ms. Adler, did you have anything further? No. Okay. Well, thank you um, for that presentation and sharing information and providing clarification. Um, I think it's obvious, obviously, from some of the comments that further clarification, I think there will be a, an education process that we'll all need to undertake with regard to understanding um, the parameters, if you will, of what's uh, allowed and what, what's not allowed under SB 202. Um, moving on um, to this portion of the agenda, and I'll strike Tori Silas because it's a board conversation. Um, with respect to a review of the advanced voting plan as presented um, initially um, by Mr. Gunn at our last regularly called meeting, um, and a review of a communication and voting plan uh, for the November 2nd, 2021 election. Um, let's see. So I think with respect to the voting plan, um, the advanced voting plan that is the seven locations that were um, proposed to uh, the members of the board. I want to open it up for any further comments or discussion. Yes, Mr. Broom. I guess I've sent several emails regarding this. So, uh, I believe that the original plan as understood, was based on Jefferson Municipal Elections. Then when the school board proposed, or, or yes, not proposed, approved the spots, then two additional locations were added for the rest of the county, or, or whatever, wherever. Anybody can vote at any location, no mm -hmm. school, it doesn't matter. Uh, a personal opinion, just looking at the, the distribution of the advanced voting locations, is that we have two gaps, one in East Cobb and the other one in West Cobb. And uh, the, the East Cobb uh, area, east of 75, there's only one advanced voting location. That's a huge number of voters in East Cobb. And one location I did not feel was sufficient for East Cobb. And uh, we went back and forth and looked at different scenarios and, and uh, uh, Brian GF, not GIS, no, it was just GIS, GIS uh, uh, calculations. And all of those numbers convinced me more than ever that East Cobb is underserved with only one advanced voting location. Uh, West Cobb, West Cobb's really pretty good. It's just a, there's a gap in the, in the 
directly West Cobb area between the locations, uh, early boat locations, but East Cobb is. No. It, I, we never did, I never did see a number of how many boaters are east of I 75, but just looking at the precinct numbers, there are a lot. And uh, I suggest that we consider an additional uh, early voting location, one at uh, East Cobb Government Center and the other one at the Sewell Mill. Mill. No, no. It's at, it's at uh, the Recreation Center out in West Cobb. Uh, you mean East Cobb? Okay. Four? Hmm? West Cobb or East Cobb? West Cobb. And it's four? East. Yes. East Cobb. East Cobb is the East Cobb Government Center. Yeah. Uh, which was a location last time. Right. And West Cobb is the. It's four. Lost you know, the, the Recreation yeah. Center. Uh, and that would fill in the map, fill in the map, so to speak, in terms of locations and their convenience to voters. Uh, it's a, it's tough to get all the way from the top of the county to the bottom of the county in East Cobb, uh, and you've only got one location, and it's at the art center, art place, I believe it's called, off of. Uh, Sprayberry High School, the road that goes by Sprayberry. It's you know, looks like a great location. Uh, man, that's a long way from Johnson Ferry, Lower Roswell Road, all of those areas in that that place. Now it's late. I don't know if it's available or possible, uh, but at least I would feel a lot better about the plan. If we had at least those uh, those two, there's two in okay. East Cobb. What you're saying, two uh, additional. It'd be one in East Cobb and one in West. West. We really need more than one additional one in East Cobb, but you know, I, I'm afraid we're too late. Maybe I, mean, I don't. I don't want to. You know, yeah. go on. I, this was the first time we had seen the actual proposed locations. I, I think you had. Verbally described, at least for me, I didn't know where all these places were. When you see them on the map, that's what yeah. brought my attention to it, and is the reason I raised the question. So, to the point with respect to being potentially late, my understanding is early voting begins October the twelfth. Am I correct in that? That's okay. And then, with respect to what's being proposed. Setting aside drop boxes for a, for a moment here, what's being proposed is seven advanced polling locations were suggested uh, during the, the last regular scheduled meeting. And per Mr. Bruning's comments, we would then be increasing that number, but he's proposing to increase that number to a total of nine. And that is polling locations because polling locations does not equal drop boxes. So polling locations, Increasing that to a total of nine, that is permissible under the law. I just wanted us all to be clear on some of the you know, bare mo minimum, you know, notes that we need to understand here. But can it be done? The good question, right? <laughs> would you like me to yeah, answer it one question at a time or? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know how we wanted to do it. Okay. So, um, as you remember, um, these, this election we are doing because we were hired by the cities and the school district. And they, as you remember, they are paying for it. And so back in March, we uh, gave them all an estimated cost based on you know, our plan um, for all of the election uh, duties. And um, we included what was previously the uh, standard for the cities and this and this last elections was weekdays uh, eight to five or nine to five, and uh, one location you know in each city, um, and then a geographic disbursement for the schools. Um, honestly, they, we have for this the last East Blast we had only five locations: the main office and four satellites. Um, for both of the last municipals, uh, we've had the main office and four satellites. 
and they were uh, open weekdays uh, at the main office only, eight to five, and the satellites were only open on the last week, and they were open nine to five predominantly. So the, the estimates were based on that. And after the contracts were signed, we had negotiations with the cities and not so much the school district because they weren't really on board until July. But we had uh, negotiations with the, the cities to ask them if we could do all three weeks for um, all the satellites. So we would be open, which we have not done for city elections before. And it took some negotiating and they agreed to that. And then we went back to them again and we said, can we do 7 a.m. to 7 p.m.? Obviously, all of that is more expensive. And um, there was negotiating back and forth for that. Um, all the costs for advanced voting are split across those two, uh, the school district and all of the individual cities. And uh, our estimate is going to be low now because we've expanded beyond what we estimated. Um, as far as the direct question about those two locations, um, we have decided we do not want to use the East Cobb Government Center for future elections. It's not really suitable and it's too small. It has a security issue where we had the door not secure in one of the last elections. And so we are trying to move out of that location. Uh, the Ward Rec Center uh, during this time of year is not available. We, we have to have them, um, we have to schedule those at the beginning of the year. We have to have them cancel program, uh, kid programs, adult, you know, recreation programs and uh, block out the three weeks for that location. It's very busy. So I don't think that those, the Ward Rec Center, I'm pretty sure it's just not available. I was shaking his head. The um, East Cobb Government Center, we could probably get that, but it's, it's really not a good place um, going forward. We had made a plan that that was, we were gonna try and find an alternative location for the big elections when we do need one out there. I'd also like to make a comment that in the last education's loss, which was in 2017, the turnout was 7.67%. So those East Cobb folks, I, I want them to vote a lot more than that, that hasn't been a big turnout for that type of election. In the last two municipal elections, 2017 is the most comparable to what we're doing this year. It was a 12.01%, basically 12% turnout uh, overall across all the cities as an average. And the very last municipal in 2019 uh, was a 16% um, turnout, but it included some mayor races. So it was more um, popular. And it was, that one was Smyrna. Um, this one is more similar to the 2017 because it was the Marietta year. And that again was a 12% turnout. Uh, so I, in other words, I think it, the facilities are fine as far as capacity for handling the numbers of voters who will be voting in this. Obviously decisions, you know, still yours, but um, I would I would think that we would not really be able to add those particular locations. Um, I also right. don't believe that we will be able to staff additional locations. But that's another issue I will answer questions about if you have those. May I make one, a comment too? Yes, that, absolutely. So the, the rec centers, thank you, Chairwoman, about the rec centers, even in a presidential year, are really tough to get because of what Janine mentioned, the programming. So Cobb voters expect the best from us and they expect the best from the senior centers and the libraries and the, and the uh, rec centers too. And it's been up to the board of commissioners then to decide, well, you know, and the, and the other office directors to decide who's gonna get the priority over that. So uh, to tie that in with the time frame that we were talking about of when the planning begins to go in for these places and when we lock things down, we're working now for May and June or May or June possibly of next year to get the locations. And we have, since I've been here almost six years now, uh, progressively 
increased our offerings and the county has been able to work with us on the, the different locations. My goodness, 2020, we wouldn't have been able to make it through if they hadn't given us all of Jim R. Miller Park, which, you know, the COVID was going on. It was different circumstances too. But um, we have, I think, a little bit more of an ear of the commissioners, a little bit more of an understanding with the other directors from the different departments to try to put a plan going forward. So, so to address down the road, your question of can we do more? We can, and we're planning on it, we're going to. Next year, for instance, we're going to hopefully see more than we had offered in, in 2020, even. but we're going to also have to staff that and take that into consideration, which is something that my staff is working on and, and you know, others, as we get more pre, uh, precincts, we're going to need more poll workers. Brenda's staff is going to be working towards that. Uh, but but just like time we lose people too, we lose places and we have been losing places and we have been losing people. Um, but I'm optimistic about, you know, we're, we're, we're interviewing people. We're bringing them on in the season roles to take on these advanced voting jobs. And, uh, I think we can get that staffing level up to where it needs to be to, to have managers, assistants, managers, and clerks. And then, you know, we can use supplemental. I mean, if we need to. To be able to staff those greater locations, but it's something that we're working towards, and we're just not able to provide that right now. I, I'm hopeful that COVID, you know, it's not going to go away, but we learn to deal with it better, and more people want to come in and work with us. And pretty soon, we have lines of folks who want to sign up to work, and we can staff these locations. We're looking for more, um, and that's and, and, you know, the more we get into it, that's the, the more we're going to go back and forth with other directors and the commissioners about, well, wait a minute, now, what about my basketball league? But um, <laughs> You know, th this time, I think that what we have, the plan that we have, it, it is a lot more than we've offered before in the past. Janine, did you mention the surrounding counties at all? I have not yet. Um, that more uh, came into play with the hours rather than, than locations. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll wait on that then and, and, and let you cover it. But, um, you know, I think that voters, along with everything else we're trying to do, um, to, to increase access. So I know that, you know, we can always do, do more in this. Our job is to look at what we can do to, to increase that effort. And I think that this is going to go a, a long way in that in that step. I'm not disagreeing with what you said that it looks like there's coverage holes, um, and it's something that I actually mentioned in front of the board of commissioners a few months ago. Looking at this, like, hey, we need to we need to be looking at these areas. We need to be looking at transit lines, you know, that sort of thing. How can we how can we benefit not just geographically, but the voters that actually where they live the most, I guess, the most voters live in the, in the county and I can provide those locations for them. So. We appreciate your work, but don't envy you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Janine yeah. and Bo, could you remind us what the deadline is for submission of our advanced voting plan? We have to publish it September 27th, 14 days before the election is the very latest. Um, of course, voters appreciate it much sooner than that. Um, and I was, as Bo mentioned, able to um, obtain some information on the web or contacting my counterparts in other uh, counties to kind of see what they're doing. Um, and so, again, it, it wasn't relevant so much to to uh, locations because everybody has a different shape to their uh, their county. But but generally, um, people are either doing seven to seven like us, but but less on the Saturday and no Sunday, or they're doing shorter hours weekdays um, and shorter hours Saturday, and they're also doing shorter hours on Sunday. So it's sort of a combination of you want, you know, not you want, but um, of, you know, counties that are doing a long day during the week, but then shorter and then some Sundays, or they're cutting way back on every day. Okay, well, no, that's fair, and it's actually a really good. Well, I'm sorry, Jessica, did you have any further questions for Janine? But listening to Janine, I think that is, I think that is fair, and I think it's relevant to do okay. a comp No, absolutely, and um, I was about to say it's a perfect segue because, again, and if we're looking at the comprehensive advanced voting plan, there are a number of components, one of which are the location, the other, obviously, the hours, as referenced by Janine. And um, also referenced to with, um, by her are the dates. And so one um, thing that was missing from this that we did not have an opportunity to have a conversation about are any Sunday 
um, and they are optional under SB 202. They are not required, but again, they are optional. Therefore, they are permitted. And I would just like to get a better sense of whether your team, um, whether you all consider Sundays when um, proposing the plan, when considering what plan proposed. Yeah. Is there more of a cost on Sunday too? Oh yes. <laughs> so um, you're correct that um, what is required is really a very minimal. It is the main office nine to five on weekdays, nine to five on both Saturdays, and the Sundays are optional. Mm -hmm. So at this point, you know, we've expanded the number of locations because it's more than the main office. We've expanded the hours during the week to the full complement. You can expand up to seven to seven. Um, that is the maximum. And then um, the Saturdays we've got the. In fact, we've got um, eight to five, so we have more than the minimum, which is nine to five. Um, so that yes, we had not selected Sundays. Um, this is a huge stretch already for the staffing level that we're at right now. Um, as Bo talked about, we um, are working towards uh, more robust staffing efforts. It's uh, this election is sort of an on, off ramp a little bit to uh, to the freeway that we want to get to, which is next year. Next year, so um, you know we're not at the staffing level to do a hugely robust uh, offering right now. We have um, right now we have staffed between four, four for sure, but possibly five workers at each location that we have today. And again, they are working the entire time, seven to seven during the weekend. There's no second shift. Right, right. They're working the you know 14 hours a day, every day, and then Saturdays we want to give them a day to rest. Certainly. Yeah. And this being, as I said, no election is unimportant, but this is definitely one that is um, smaller in scope. Okay, and, that, and that's fair. I, I just think it's incumbent upon this board to look at all of the methods, days, and or locations that are permitted under the law. And that's why I've, I've, at least everything that I've stated, I you know want us to, as a baseline, what's being inquired about is permitted under the law and um, just have a, a very transparent over open conversation um, about it. And obviously resources, whether they be human or financial, are considerations. Manpower. Yeah, yeah. Um, in my research, the only county that is uh, offering Sunday is Fulton um, and DeKalb is another one that they are not. Uh, and then the only other counties that are really having elections are some of the smaller ones in our area, Cherokee. I checked Rockdale and, and Fayette, and they are not doing Sunday. Um, so some have not posted their their offering yet, but that was a quick look to see what was out there. Okay. And just for our own edification, just to kind of close the loop, you said that Fulton is offering Sunday. Can you share with us? Because I believe it's permitted for um, two Sundays in the out. Can you share what, to the extent you know, what they are offering on that Sunday? Yeah, they are offering both Sundays, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay. They're they're actually doing 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. throughout okay. throughout okay. weekdays, so they're not open as long as they are on the weekdays. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of a trade off. <laughs> no, no, believe me, I can see it. It's a lot of trading. You know, do you pull back on hours to allow for expanded locations? Do you pull back on locations and hours to perhaps get a Sunday to you know, Mr. Garland's point, it very well may be more expensive on Sunday, but I do believe, again, it's incumbent upon um, not just the board, but the staff to consider them and have this robust conversation. Um, and then, well, first, are there any further comments or questions around the two components we've discussed thus far? The locations and essentially a combo of the days. One comment that I have is that uh, We are, we are, I believe, stretching to the limits in terms of the hours that we're open. Personally, I would see it as more advantageous to perhaps reduce the time instead of being open all three weeks. Maybe we're only open two weeks and then add the Sundays in. That's possible. 
So the law requires the three weeks at, again at the main office. And our previous um, methodology was to open three weeks at the main office, which is required. And then at the satellites open the last, the final week. So, I mean, if you, that were something you wanted to do, we could do, a, you know, a modification of that and do the satellites for two weeks with Sundays or something. So I get, I, I just raised the question because as you pointed out, turnout is going to be small just based on history. I'm just afraid folks will be sitting in some of these early voting locations three weeks before the election empty with nothing to do. Yeah. And uh, we're used to that. <laughs> you, but it's not it's, use of our limited financial resources. Well, it's, the, the concern I've got is that uh, they're sitting there with nothing to do. People come in, people say, gosh, nobody else is voting. Why should I vote? And, and uh, it's, it just see, seems like in odd year, you know, we might want to do something different. We're, we're strict as, as Bo said during the previous meeting, we're stretching a little bit this year uh, as a proof of concept for next year, because we know next year will be full bore all the way. And uh, I'm just wondering or raising the issue that should we cut back a little bit on the length of early voting and consider the Sunday, the two Sundays. Uh, to me, for for folks that working working people, laborers, Sunday is a pretty is a, is would be a valuable uh, capability to offer them. Uh, and we need three weeks uh, at the satellites. I, I question that. So. Could I comment on that? Absolutely. I, I would like to say that um, having visited advanced voting locations during high turnout elections as well as low, um, there definitely are dead times. But my concern with with not offering the full offerings that we are at least proposing for three weeks would only be confusing to our voters. I think that's a difficult message uh, when they are accustomed to having three weeks of advanced voting and we have been consistently building um, during those three, those, in, those entire three weeks. So I would just say our messaging was gonna be difficult for our voters. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree. I mean, how do I know? Yeah, I know that obviously the main location is, you know, open for the entirety, you know, that three week period, but then recognizing, you know, is it all satellite locations that go that are reduced from three weeks or is it just, you know, two satellite locations or maybe because of that gap, if you will, in East Cobb, we give them the full three weeks, but we pull back to two weeks in another area. And so I just. I would tend to agree with Jessica with regard to whatever locations we have. It, in my opinion, humble opinion, it should be the entirety of the three weeks. Um, setting aside, obviously, what those times are because fluctuations in the time could pull, you know, some resources back in. And, and I apologize. Go ahead. No, it's okay. I did want to thank you. I, I did want to mention too that I, I get what you're saying because it's it's all part of our thought process too. It was like how we. How can we best use our resources? What's going to be best for the voter and, and that sort of thing? Of course, we don't ever put a, a dollar amount to any vote. And you know, it's it's not thinking about it that way. It's it's really what's going to help the voters in the best way. And um, to Miss Brooks's point, what I was my team and I were getting at here and what we had discussed with Janine early on was just that. What's the most uniform plan that we can present to eliminate confusion for the voters? And for our, ourselves, because it does get to be um, confusing with the deliveries and the time frames that we need to schedule and, and, and that sort of thing. It has been what you have proposed has been done in the past, and this was going to be our time to to try something different. Um, and then with the hours offered seven to seven during the week versus the Sunday, 
Um, and even our time frame on the Saturdays, it, it's again hard to determine what's best for a voter because everybody's situations are different. But later on in the fall, we thought that people, you know, as they began to do family stuff or there's football games or other things that people are involved in that may happen over the weekends, maybe we could expand the hours to the, the maximum during the week and have a full, uh, is that 14 days where maybe before work or after work, you can make an accommodation to come in and vote. Um, and, and still we have many people that come in and during the workday, you know, it's, it's just really hard to gauge, but that was, that was our thought process through planning what we had presented, um, as far as the time and then the, and then the weeks. And of course, you know, we'll do whatever the board recommends. Um, but I just wanted to, to give you that insight. Yes, go ahead. Mr. I, I would like to say, let's leave it like it is, but charge them to get more manpower than maybe off for a Sunday. Okay, so to be certain when you suggest that we leave it like it is, you're speaking to the three weeks, all locations, including satellites open from 7 to 7 p.m. I just want to confirm that that's what you're suggesting, Mr. Garland. If that's what y'all can handle. But not on Saturdays. It's 8 to 5 on Saturdays. Okay. Nine to five. 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 Go ahead, Jim. Hi, Lisa. Eight to five is what we have proposed for Saturday. Gotcha. On the, I guess on the flyer. Is it say nine? Yep. Maybe I was wrong. <laughs> okay. Do you have that? Do you have that? Is it nine to five or eight to five? Nine to five. Okay. Yeah. And I think I should first. I want to say I think consistency is really important. Actually, having worked early vote, I found that a lot of people came here. To you know, and stood in line here because they didn't know where other places were. They didn't know, like they'd gone to some other community center and it wasn't open. It was only open one week, you know. So I actually think this is a really um, comprehensive and consistent plan. And from a voter communication standpoint, it's very easy to say these seven locations are open seven to seven Monday through Friday and nine to five on Saturdays. So I I think this is um, from voter communication super easy and really nice to have consistency across the locations. And I appreciate. The seven to seven, I do think that really accommodates working. Anybody who's working or anybody, you know, just in general, it gives you an early morning. It gives you a later in the evening across the board in the week. I appreciate the seven to seven accommodation. With again, with the emphasis that you can go to any of these locations. Exactly. Yes. You can go to any of these locations. Right. So if you work near some, you don't have to, you know, I think. One of the things that you brought up was, you know, that there might be people who, um, you know, East Cobb might not have as much coverage, which I agree with if you look at the map, but, you know, you might be dropping off a kid somewhere that's close by an early vote location and can run in. You know, that's the nice thing about advanced in-person voting is that you can actually go to any of these locations. So if you're driving by somewhere, then you have that opportunity to go vote when you have an hour or a few minutes in this case. So that, our, well, is there any further comment or questions with respect to locations, time, and dates? I believe we've covered those components of the advanced voting plan. I did just yes. want to, um, just to say publicly that we did the GIS uh, mapping and um, we used five miles from each location and 93% of the county can get to a location uh, within five miles and 7% were outside of that. We then did a six mile radius and everybody in the county can get to a location uh, within six miles. That is important. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and then finally, to revisit the topic that we undertook earlier uh, in to, during today's meeting, um, ballot drop boxes to the extent that they are implicated during the advanced voting period is in my opinion, the final component that we need to discuss um, for this advanced voting plan. And I know we've engaged in a fair amount of conversation uh, earlier in the agenda uh, with regard to ballot boxes. However, again, if we are considering the advanced voting plan that is or potentially is a component of it and it needs to be addressed so that Janine and Bo and their respective teams can move forward recognizing that September the 27th is quickly approaching 
and the desire to want to get the information out as quickly as possible via a tremendous communication plan that was provided to the members of the board. And thank you, Janine, uh, and your team for pulling that together. So I'm going to open up the floor with regard to suggestions, proposals, recognizing we've already had robust conversation around the utility, let's call it, of uh, drop boxes. Um, but I do believe that we need to talk about it in the in the context of this advanced voting plan. Mr. Bruni. Uh, I had a question on the box that's here in the office. Uh, if the advanced voting is up at seven to seven, is the office open seven to seven? Yes, the office has to be open Does when uh, voting is taking place. We have the staff reception, we got the staff, the registrars to check on any registration issues. Supervisor. So, the same hours of this location as any of the other locations in terms of the Dropbox access. And then further to that point, would the five additional drop boxes require additional staffing in the five locations that we've already potentially identified? And that you've already proposed four to five, four to five workers. In. You know, if it's low turnout, probably not. Uh, you know, because it's it just takes the presence there in the room with the with the box. Mm -hmm. um, here it would. Well, but it's already here. We're already required to do that. Yeah. So you know, if it got super busy and we were looking at 30, 40 percent turnout. Then we would want to we would want to have somebody out there dedicated for that and that would be that's not currently part of our staffing plan so sure. be in addition to um but next we're already, should we will yeah yes we're already planning to have um the technicians be the couriers of the ballots yeah. okay. and i'm sorry just for our all of our edification i apologize for interrupting but i do want to kind of close out points that they're made you just made reference to me that the uh, the plan is to have the technicians be the courier of the ballots. That is permissible also with respect to the ballots that will be picked up. I just want to be because there obviously was no plan with regard to the, the ballots that were placed in the drop boxes because that's not in the current plan. Correct. Either either way or both. Okay. Um, we have to have somebody put up. You know the. Okay. Uh, bring in all of the ballots that have been either hand delivered or dropped off. Um, and so I believe our plan is to have them sealed into a box, have the transfer form, you know, sign out from the polling location and sign back in here at the main office with uh, the courier. And the courier in this case will, we believe that we are just, uh, we would have to hire this person anyway. These would be our technicians that are on our staff that you know, help it at the polling locations um, with technical issues. Um, there are our staff. They're not like vendor technicians. Okay. okay. I just wanted to to further clarify the point as to whether drop boxes, while not in the proposed plan, if they were to be placed in the proposed plan, would that increase the number of uh, employees or individuals that are working the polling location um, in the in that in those five locations and it it sounds as if that's far the answer is no i believe that's true oh, yeah yeah, yeah. It, it would just require keeping straight the ones that are in the drop boxes and, and not processed and the ones that were processed by the hand delivery to the the polling staff oh. but it's so it's just a matter of you know keeping things straight up straight and I, I just want to follow up miss brooks had already pointed out that the the voter experience with the drop boxes should we choose to use them will be different than they were last year a bit i mean you, you know they were outside before and it was 24 7. i witnessed when i came into the office super early there would be people just a constant flow of people getting their ballots into the drop boxes as the line was building outside and then at some point during the day if you wanted to drop into the drop box you're going to be around people because the, the lines were out there and then at the end of the night when we finished voting again people were picking it back up because there's not really a place to park and go walk your ballot in when there's a hundred people in the line. Sure. Um, and that's just information me not trying to slay. Just it was very popular in um, in hours that we weren't actually voting. And uh, in this case, I guess the only the only box we would have uh, 
not in a voting area would be the would be the one at the main office. Okay. Am I right? Because otherwise they're going to be in the in the area they, where the voting yeah, takes place. They, yeah, they still have to. We have it in the main lobby and not in the voting area, but it's it's, it's pretty close. <laughs> yeah, but. Right. And then just to again, I apologize to follow up on the point that you just made as far as drawing the distinction and keeping those ballots separate. I believe I heard earlier and in, in kind of espousing the benefits of being able to walk in and hand it to someone during the course of the day, your staff will be trained and will be instructed to start that. It, that validation process, So, to the extent that it's been opened. That's the means by which we would keep those straight because obviously those that were in the ballot. Let me finish all of those that were in the ballot box would not have been open or in the drop box would not have been open. Correct? No, they, they wouldn't be sorry. Jenny, no, I mean, you know more about this. The, the security flap would not be torn. We have to be able to access it. Mean, right. on that. So just so we're on this, we're not open right. the ballots, but I just wanted to clarify. Right. But the, the security uh, flap would not be open. I'm trying to identify an easy means of distinction to the extent that it seems like there could potentially be some confusion. Those that came out of the drop box versus those that were handed to someone, um, you know, they are the polling manager. One of the benefits, as uh, as Evelyn shared with us, is that her staff or your staff can begin that process of uh, handling them such that you don't lose that day. Correct. Well, it's that handling process. I'm just going to call it handling because I don't want to make too yeah. many mistakes. But <laughs> that handling process has commenced in during the day. That is the means by which we can distinguish those that were handed to someone versus those that were retrieved from the ballot box, drop box at the end of the day. Well, they would all be have to be kept separate. I was going to say, they're going to be in separate. Yeah, boxes. I'm just saying there's no difficulty in that, it sounds to me, it, because the, yeah. the, the security flap would have been open. And, and, and yes, and we would just have to keep them separate anyway. And and I, I won't say 100% that is how we would be able to distinguish it, because say if we were to, on the last day, the Friday before the election, where you get super busy with advance in person voting, they may not make it through all the ballots that are turned in if they have a lot of them walked in. No. So there may be some that still have flaps that come back that by the time they reach here, their chain of custody would be different. They would be kept separate until the point where they go through our processing here at the main office, in which case uh, by, by mail ballots are treated exactly the same. I'm, I'm sure, though, that we would have to keep Dropbox completely separate, separate in, in the way that it is specifically defined in the, in the code with a um, state provided transfer form that is specific to drop boxes. Okay. So it would be its own process and the other is its own process. Okay. And, and to the extent that again, it's, a, it's provided for drop boxes themselves are provided for in the code and then specific processes are provided for in the code. Okay. I apologize, Mr. Bernie, go ahead. I apologize. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Early vote, the ballots be returned here or to the warehouse here okay. and what you were talking about so that would allow us effectively to track if if we have drop boxes this election you know we're going to put the hypothetical that we've got so we would actually be able to because we have this specific transfer form and because we're having a hand in option i mean that's always been the option but we would be able to see clearly from a numbers perspective what the Dropbox use was and what the hand delivery option. Right. So that would also, from a data nerd perspective in my brain, I'm like, oh, well, that would be really helpful for us to be able to know what the Dropbox usage looks like versus the hand delivery usage, right? So we would be able to tell that from a numbers. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And right now, sure, like, yeah. it just, it just it's, uh, you know, I'm hoping that we'll have a sample size enough to be able to tell something right. this election. We hope that it's going to be a higher turnout. So, uh, but but yes, I mean to us to the extent that people vote and there's a percentage of hand in versus drop boxes. Right. Well. I guess if we're looking at the or super, if we're thinking, is yes. be, what did you say, like six percent or something? It might not give us a huge sample, but we would be able to track those two in their own columns, basically. Okay. Janine, you. Yes, uh, yes. Go ahead. Let's not say anything further. Go ahead, Jeff. Right. Well, Janine, you have said that there, there is, there, there is tracking documentation already that is prescribed and 
by code for the way the two or the drop boxes the, the uh, drop yes yes, yes. Our, last, right. last year we had uh, also uh, tracking for how many you know were picked up at each location on each uh, day we didn't have a requirement to pick it up each day last year we do we do now right am i correct in saying that having the the one person I, if I understood correctly, the one person courier, um, our technician is different from last year where we, I thought we were required to have two persons. They kind of double checked and, you know, did some counting before yeah. they were. The, uh, the rule, um, had two persons that was necessary. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you check so, so that's a bit, so that's a, uh, that's a slight difference if we talk. We have two couriers. Okay. So we will have two couriers. Okay. All right. Thank you. We we never, you know, even if there wasn't a rule, we would not want just one person to be in custody of talent for their sake and ours. Right. And those two couriers again are drawn from the four to five staff that we're already planning for for the location. Correct. Okay. Which it does one. reduce the numbers that are there for the rest of closing. Okay. You know, because they have to leave to take the ballots. Okay. Right. And in the rest of closing, obviously, ballot or I'm sorry, polls have closed. And this is the wrap up for the right. okay. Okay. But those two, just to be certain, those two would be there regardless. Am I correct? Yes. I mean, don't have to they hire two would be gone and regardless. Okay. Off the subject, but from for the early voting tabulation, are the chips brought in here each night? For the actual votes that were on the scheme and the memory cards from the machines, right? They are not. They're they're locked in the uh, in the scanner. They're sealed in the scanner and locked. Wow. So each night when we lock up, is there a deputy there overnight? No. Which was the issue we had at the East Cobb Government Center? The door was not secure. Hmm. It was not secure or it was not capable of being secured. Did someone just fail to secure it? It was uh it was a failure in the equipment. Oh, I see. Door. So it was so there was some issue with the equipment such that it just did it not secure. Didn't over latch, um the key code okay. and all of that apparatus. Okay. Yeah. It's been attempted to be fixed many times and we thought it was fixed, but it was not sure. Okay. Okay. Um, anything further? I believe again we've been, oh, I don't know. perhaps we haven't, perhaps we have exhausted the conversation around the components of the advanced um, voting plan. Again, the locations, days and times, and then the third component drop boxes. Anything further? Jessica? Nothing further, correct or uh, nothing, nothing further. Further, I, I just wanted to make sure that all of us were in agreement with um, the communication plan being meeting our expectations. Okay, yeah, I've not um, I've gone to that particular um, agenda item. Just wanted to make certain that we were close okay. uh, on this um, on item number uh, one, the first bullet point. So I think. That, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that was it. Okay, excellent. Um, so I think at this point, it's a matter of reducing to paper the proposed advance noting, or I'm sorry, voting plan and um, bringing it back to us for approval. And we need to talk about what will, what will be in that with regard to ballot drop boxes. Because per Mr. Garland's comment, are we fine with this as proposed? And when I say this, the advanced voting plan as proposed by uh, Mr. Gunn with regard to locations, the seven locations that were proposed and the hours that were proposed. As we've talked about hours and we've talked about days and we've talked about locations today. <laughs> There's a method to my madness, trust me. <laughs> I, Jennifer, am good with the locations and the hours. Okay. So is there a motion on the table with respect to the plan that was proposed and presented to us in the flyer 
that we've discussed at nauseum during this meeting. Is there a motion on the floor with regard to those two of three components of the advanced voting plan? Yes. Mr. Garland. Oh, and that's a motion to approve yeah, it. That's a motion to approve it. Is there a second? We'll second. Okay. It's been moved and properly seconded. <laughs> it's been moved and properly seconded that with respect to locations and with respect to the hours of operation and the dates upon which these advanced voting polling locations will be open, um, that it be approved as presented um, by Mr. Gunn. All of those in favor um, for the approval, please signify by raising your hands. Um, everyone approve, uh, Everyone voted yes for approval, um, so it unanimously passes. Now, the third component of <laughs> potential or of the advanced voting plan is potentially drop boxes. Is there a motion on the floor with respect to drop boxes? Move that we include the maximum number of drop boxes that are allowed. By the Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and properly seconded to include the maximum number of drop boxes allowed by, by law. All of those that are in favor of approving this motion. Please signify by raising your hands. And that unanimously uh, is a question. Yeah, Chairwoman, can you have the board uh, determine which location does not have a drop box? Um, yes, we do have to do that. So um, if everyone has the, the, map, the map, well, really the locations as noted on the um, as noted on the flyer. So earlier in our conversation, we identified the fact or confirmed the fact that there are five additional box drop boxes permitted in addition to the one at the main location. It's not. I'm sorry, we were confused. It's okay. Do you have an extra copy of the map? Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. Do you need this? And I've just got it on my phone. So. Yeah, <laughs> I can help you with that. Yeah. Oh, if, if, uh, just to reiterate something that Steve brought up earlier, um, mm -hmm. if we want one in each of the cities, yes, um, then the two unincorporated areas are the art place and the it's the the uh, uh it's the brown uh, campus the brown uh campus learning the professional learning. Training. there you go the yeah. final yeah. two so i'm i'm sorry what was that so we're deciding between the art place and the professional uh, Brown Professional Learning Center. That's what we have to take. Because yeah. right, if we're saying the five municipalities. Right. If, if what you're saying earlier mm -hmm. is you want one in each municipality, then we already have the Mariana yeah. location. Mm -hmm. And then we want to plant Ackworth, Austell, Kennesaw, and Powder Springs Which right, to have their one in those locations. And so then we're looking at the two that are not in cities, which is the the Brown campus in the Smyrna area and the art place that is in the Northeast Cobb area. Well, to the point that Mr. Bruning made that there is only one advanced voting location east of 75, yes. perhaps it makes sense to place that fifth box in art place. Now, of course, I've not, I personally have not been to Art Place. I've been to the others. The question then is ensuring that the proposed area where the voting will take place, I presume it can accommodate the drop box. We have not done any research on that. So that's then this, this final component of the plan, the, not the fact that whether drop boxes will be used, we've decided that they will be 
the um, ensuring that they can be um, accommodated in the locations where you're proposing to vote in each of these locations. Yeah, we, we can now with this direction mm -hmm. board, we can go to the locations that you prefer to make sure that they will accommodate the box. And if not, we would report back. So, yeah, yes, thank you. My, my plan then is to produce another flyer like the advance in person flyer that covers absentee by mail options, which will cover the drop boxes, the library drop off, mailing it back in, walking into the office, that type of information, which we haven't done before. Before it had been kind of that information had been looped into this. Mm -hmm. There was no map with this. Um, so now we're Voting options expand and become harder to understand. We'll have the two separate flyers: absentee and person options, which is what you have with the, uh, uh, the flyer there, and then the absentee by mail. Um, and then, like Janine said, we'll go out and do uh, just a review of the locations to be sure that we can effectively put um, a drop box there. If there was any problems, we'll come back and let the board know, or Janine will let the board know. Otherwise, we'll just uh, present you with a flyer. Uh, for, for a comment approval, does that does that work? Yeah, that works. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jessica, are, are you, are you, I heard. I'm presuming you've heard Mr. Gunn and your fine with what he's proposed as for his next steps. I am. Okay. And and I am very familiar with the art place and the senior se senior center that's in that area, and also the accessibility as far as major, um, loc major driving thoroughfares. Yeah, I'm more concerned that to the because when they assess these locations, they did not assess them from the perspective of placing a drop box there, and so that is the subsequent assessment that you all need to make. Correct. Yes. Okay. Right. So um, I, I must what what Mr. Gunn has said. Excellent. Thank you. Um, moving on to the next item, um, and again, um. At, at my request and, and the request of other members of the board at the last meeting, we've requested a communication plan just for items like this. Obviously, there's a lot of change that has um, been undertaken since the last uh, vote, and we wanted to get a sense of how we were going to communicate to Cobb County voters what um, voting options they have. And uh, we've requested that a communication plan be provided to us, and um, that was provided to us. And so at this point, um, hopefully you have copies of it and uh, we'll entertain any comments or questions about it from the board. Oh, I apologize. Is there anything that you, before we, we discuss it, is there anything um, that you'd like to share with us? Uh, that no, like just it? that, um, you know, things are somewhat fluid. Sure. Like, um, you know, there are, there's other communication, like the flyer that, that Bo is pro uh, proposing. There's, um, we're, you know, constantly uh, determining when a new opportunity might come up where if we've seen that there, uh, you know, our questions we're getting in the office, we might do something to, you know, try and answer that more globally. Um, so, I mean, this is a framework for where, you know, legal um, deadlines are and where you want to remind people the deadlines coming up and that sort of thing, but it, it's not all encompassing. There might be other opportunities as well. Okay, and we absolutely would want you and your team to take advantage of those other uh, additional opportunities, just wanting to understand again, given the significant changes that have taken place, um, even to the point of expanding, as you said, shared that we have the opportunities for advanced voting, making certain that messaging is getting out there uh, in a consistent manner. So this is really just the basis. Yes, and we definitely appreciate you providing. And this is something that can be, uh, you know, put into every election. Yes. So these are the common kinds of things that happen, but there might also be individual election issues that come up that we would deal with on a one time basis. Of course, of course. Um, so with that uh, being said, uh, does anyone have um, comments or questions for um, Ms. Evelyn and her team about the proposed communication? I just thought this was super informative. I like this a lot. Great. <laughs> no, I mean, it was really clear of when you sort of plan to kind of hit each each spot. And um, yeah, I, I liked this a lot. The only thing 
that I, and I did want to say, I thought this was, I hadn't known this before that it goes in the club county water bills. Mm -hmm. so I didn't yeah, know. we're working on that flyer right now. Okay, because <laughs> I thought that was a, you know, that's great because that really, that's going to touch everybody. So that's really good. I liked that a lot. And um, yeah, I thought this was great. Thank you. Anything further, Jessica? Do you have anything? Nothing. Um, I just would like to thank Janine and staff for providing this for us because we just have not had uh, hard copy and the, and the type of discussion um, that we've been having as extensive a discussion in in the past. So I think we are we're we have a solid foundation and we can build on this. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Anything further here in the room? Um, is there a motion with regard to the proposed communication plan? Do we need to accept it? Sure. I, I think so. <laughs> second. And it's moved properly second to um, accept the or approve the communications plan as provided to us in the format it was provided. Um, all those in favor of doing so signify by raising your hand. Unanimously accepted and approved. Thank you so much, Janine. Thank you. Uh, did you make the motion to approve? Yeah. 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 Pat made the motion. Yeah. yeah. And, and Steve, um, I wasn't loud enough. That's true. Four something. It was just a look. <laughs> yeah. You guys got uh, the monopoly on the motion. Yeah, you got it. I think so. So that's extra credit. You know? Indeed, indeed. Yeah. yeah. Um, so at this point, we're at the point of um, board member comments. Uh, we've obviously made lots of comments uh, during this almost two hours. Uh, but there is there any um, board com uh, member comments? We'll start with you, Jessica, just again to be for certain more inclusive. Well, I don't really have a comment. I would like to ask Janine um, who who board members would need to contact and in what time frame if we're interested in attending poll worker training. Oh. Um, I guess Brenda, because Brenda's not here. Oh, um, she's probably going to make that announcement at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Of what the dates are for training, uh, I believe they're starting at the end of September. So uh, at the beginning of September, we're having our next meeting, and uh, we'll go over that whole process for you. Thank you. Anything um, here in the room from from board members? Yes, Mr. Mr. Not to beat the dead horse, but uh, I would mention next year's plan, and I think it would be very helpful to be involved a little bit along the way, as opposed to wait till it's all good. Uh, so I would request that we start a discussion of, the, of next year's plan, because uh, obviously you're already looking at it. Uh, so I have a, a great concern about the number of locations and the distribution of locations. And the same concerns I had on this plan, but this was this is a little election. Next year's will be, I mean, next year's between the primary and the general, we're almost certain to have runoffs in addition to the primary. Probably runoffs from the general. So, I would, uh, then you can lobby for the money that we need to cover all this. I was about, you know, I'm about to touch on that too. Why don't I get you a map <laughs> like we have here of what we're looking at currently, which is, I believe, a list of 15 locations. Not that we have locked down, but that we're looking at. Right. And then what I'm going to need help with is finding locations to fill those spots. Because we have a, a, we have staff that does that. Um, but, but we are going to do a lot of stuff that you don't see that right. see. And you could be out there and you could hear from your, you know, the constituents from the voters directly as the board. And also, if there's ever a place that we really need that we may be having trouble, we're going to need your voice to kind of be the loudest on that. That's, That's great. You so let me uh, let me do that. Let me I'll have our uh, Map person create a map that shows the locations, and I'll give you a list like we have there of the, of the at least the Aware. the beginnings of it, and then start now. Sounds great. great. Yeah. Perfect. What about the? How are you analyzing 
data from uh, this. This we don't have to talk about that. We'll talk about that next week. <laughs> We're going to put a pin in that question. <laughs> um, anything further, um, Jim? Uh, anything further? I just appreciate all the work these people have done. Likewise, that, and that was going to be my comment. We definitely appreciate the opportunity to have this conversation um, you know, with you all and to gauge in kind of a, you know, an exploratory, if you will, um, opportunity if, if we're kind of in this new, new world. And um, so it, it's been great. Uh, the next scheduled board meeting um, of this um, board is September the 13th at 2021. I'm sorry, of 2021 at 3 p.m. Um, and it will take place at the uh, board of commissioners chamber, um, our normal location. Um, Garrett, or do we need to no. move on in? Okay, so there is no need um, for an executive session. And so with that, um, I will adjourn the meeting at 5.53 p.m. Um, and to those of you that are um, online, again, thank you for your participation.